So in the sales order, you can see multiple buttons starting from edit, back, fulfill, until manage revenue recognition. All these buttons are standard netshoot buttons. So what if you want to add your own custom button? So to add your own custom button on this sales order record or maybe any other record in netshoot, we're going to make use of two different scripts. First script, which I'm going to use is user event script with a single entry point, which is called as before load entry point. So using this user event script before load entry point, we're going to make use of script context.form. So using this form object property, we're going to add our button in this before load entry point. So in my NetSuit help center, I have searched for server widget module. I'm going to click enter on this. I'm going to click on this first one, which is n slash UI slash server widget module. So right now in the server widget module, we can see multiple object members, assistant object members, button object members, field object members, and form object members. So this form object member is nothing but your script context.form. So I'm going to click on this form object members. So in this form object members, we can see multiple APIs starting from form.add button. So we're going to make use of this form.add button API. So I'm going to click on this form.add button API. So in this form.add button API, we can clearly see the supported script types are Sweetlet script and user event before load. We are going to make use of user event script before load entry point to add this button. This form.add button API has three different properties. One is ID, the label and the function name. So as I said before, to add that button, we're going to make use of the script context.form. So I'm going to declare this script context.form in a variable called as form. And we're going to make use of form.add button API. So I'm going to add a button with using this form.add button. And I have provided the ID as cust page underscore custom button. And I have provided the label as custom button. And if you clearly notice, I have provided the function name as custom button function. And I'm also trying to call that function directly from here. So as per the documentation, if you clearly see the function name to be triggered on a click event. So for example, the function name should be the name of the method defined in custom module client script. So that is the reason we're going to make use of a client script. So this is the client script which I want to use. So by default, if you can see, I have kept page init entry point. The reason why I have kept page init entry point is so when we create our custom module function using client script, there should be always one single entry point, else NetSuite is going to throw you an error. And we are not going to perform any operation using this page init function. So we're going to create our custom function within this client script. So we already know what is the function name. The function name which we provided in user event is custom button function. So we're going to copy the same function name and I'm going to place that function name here. So in this function, let's add a single log. It says console.log, let's say test custom button function. Now coming back to our user event script, we are calling that custom function directly from user event before load. So now that we have added our client script and we have added the button using this form.add button API. Now what is the link between this function and the client script? How we are going to make a link with this form.add button custom function and our client script. So to do that, I'm going to go back to Nature Help Center. So I'm going to go back to my form object members. In the form object members, I can see another API which is script file id script file module path. So I'm going to make use of script module path. I'm not going to make use of script file id because if I use script file id, I have to pass the internal id of the client script. So for example, let's say I have uploaded this particular file, user event script and the client script file in this folder. And the file internal id of the client script is 9095. If this is the case, I have to make use of script file id and I have to pass the internal id in that value instead of 32. So if I move the script from let's say sandbox to production, the client script file id will be something different and I have to keep on changing for each and every environment. So I'm going to make use of this script module path instead of script file id. You can clearly see we are specifying the path of the client script file. So I'm going to do the same in my user event script. So if I use this client script file id, it is internal id of the file. So I'm going to make use of client script module path. So I'm going to assign the path. So to assign the path, I'm going to go back to my file cabinet and I'm going to copy this path completely. And coming back to my code, I'm going to add a single code and paste the value which I copied from there. So I'm going to replace all the space and the greater than symbol from the parent folder to the child folder with a forward slash. And I'm going to do the same for the child folders of other suit script code by replacing those space and greater than symbol with forward slash and even at the end i'm going to place a forward slash and then i'm going to paste the client script file name which i have created the client script file name is c 
pl underscore button functionality dot js so i have placed that in this module path so now that we have linked our client script with this form dot client script module path api but if i just go back to my client script so make sure to return this custom button function in your return statement so i'm going to add a comma in this and i'm going to place this key and the value as same so let's upload this code to our netshoot account both my client script and my user event script so i have uploaded my user event script and client script for user in script, I have created the script record and I have deployed this on a client. Right now, this is nothing but our customer record. I have just renamed the customer name into client. So this is my customer record. So I have deployed my user in script on a customer record. And coming to client script, there is no need to deploy our client script. We are directly providing the module path of our client script within our user event script. So there is no need to deploy our client script on a customer record. So now let's test our button. So I'm going to navigate to list, relationships, and I'm going to click on clients. In your case, it's going to be customers. And I'm going to open my first customer, which is switch script B. I'm going to click on view. My expectation is the button should be appearing. I can see my custom button. So we have just added only console.log in our client script. So I'm going to click function F12. Right now I open my console. I'm going to click on this button to test my button functionality. So I'm going to click on this button. I can see my console.log is being executed. It says test custom button function. But in this case, I have not even performed any kind of operation using this custom button function. I just log this console.log. So what if I have to pass some kind of values from this customer record? Let's say I want to pass this value called as switch script B or the entity ID of this customer record to my client script. And based on that value, I have to show or display something in my page, right? Now let's see how to pass the values like entity ID and few other values as a parameter to our custom function. So I'm going to go back to my user event script before load. Here I'm going to pass my arguments. So in order to pass my customer ID, I'm going to make use of the script context.new record and I'm going to get the value of that customer ID. So for that, I'm going to declare a variable called as entity ID. I made use of script context.new record and the get value to get my customer ID. So entity ID is nothing but my internal ID of my customer ID field on this customer record. So I have just used this internal ID. So in order to pass this variable as my first argument in my custom button function, I'm going to start with double quotes and I'm going to end this double quote. Inside this double quotes, I'm going to use my placeholder starting with dollar and two flower braces. This is called as placeholder. Inside this, I'm going to place my variable called entity ID. Now let's say I want to pass another parameter. I'm going to make use of comma and start another double quote and end this double quotes. And I'm going to place another placeholder, which is going to pass my script context.type, which is going to tell me whether it is view, create, or edit. So I'm going to start this placeholder with dollar and two flower braces. And I'm going to place the value, which is script context.type here. So now that I'm going to pass two different arguments to my custom button function. And these are all called as template returns. So you can search for template returns in Google and you can find this details more about this template returns and how I have placed my variable value so now that i have passed my arguments two arguments one is entity id and the type script context or type now i have to receive this in my custom function which is in my client script i'm going to make use of a module called as message module go to netshoot help center i'm going to search for message module and i'm going to click on this n slash ui slash message module and this message module i have an api called as message.create i'm going to make use of this message.create api and when I use this message.create, it is going to return me this message object members. Using this message object member, I'm going to show it on top of this customer name. So in my custom function of my client script, I'm going to place this message.create API. And I have provided the title as message and the message as custom button triggered with value. And here also I'm trying to make use of same template returns. And I have captured the value as entity ID in my first argument. I'm going to paste the argument as entity ID. And the second argument, which is going to be as type and the type of message which I'm going to show is information. And I'm going to make use of this object members called as dot show. So since we are making use of this message API, which is message dot create, I'm going to define this module, which is n slash UI message. And I'm going to pass the alias name here and the function called as message. So let's upload this code to our netshoot account directly from here. And also I'm going to upload my user event script as well. So to test our script on the customer record, I'm going to open this customer record again in a view mode the custom button is appearing so let's open our console by clicking function f12 so now let's test our button so i'm going to click on this custom button i can see my console on the right hand side 
and here is my message which says custom button triggered with value customer id is with script b and the mode which we triggered is view 